Jamie is with me here. Hi, Jamie. Can we hear you? I hope you can, Andy. Scott, yeah. thank you. Andy, how's it going? I also. Stuff. How about that? Uh, mm -hmm. Once again, guys, as always, we want everybody to know that this is for educational purposes only. Anything that you might see in here today shouldn't be construed as investment advice. Uh, if that's what you are seeking, please look for an RIA or a registered broker, somebody who can lead you down the right path, uh, so they say, and, and take your money for fees and whatnot. But uh, we're going to have some. Uh, we're going to have some fun. We're going to show you some uh, cool software. Uh, I, I always like it when we got a nice percentage of those kicking the tires for the first time. Uh, because I really want to convey the message of how important it is to have a software. We always say it's not just it's, it's to me it's just as important to know what to trade as it is to know how to trade. So with that said, let's let's dive in and take a look at what we also provide on top of this very good software. Incredible software, I should say, is uh, you're not alone with trade ideas. Uh, we have first class onboarding here as far as education, training, um, uh, and that's continues. It conti it, we don't stop, all right? That's why we provide you with webinars, you know, four days a week in the same time slot. That's five Eastern time, uh, Monday through Thursday. Uh, it's usually a combination of Steve, Jamie, and myself, but on we throw you a treat for on Wednesday with Dan Merkin and Brad Williams. Dan is our CEO. And Brad is our CTO, so uh, that's a really good one to attend. To um, if you have some Q and A's, uh, and they will uh, dabble in some of the advanced stuff like Brokerage Plus. So uh, that's uh, uh, they're all good. And on Friday, we opened up something about a couple of months ago called Friday Support Sessions. This is not only for people at Trade Ideas. If you want to learn more about uh, trade ideas in our product we have we offer three hours uh, on Friday for you to come in and ask questions and see the uh, software in action uh, during live market hours it's always good when you're watching the tickers flow and the charts moving uh, versus you know the limited amount that we can do here after hours so once again, if you're not a member, you want to see more, learn more about the uh, trade ideas, please come to that Friday support session if you're available from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, and I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the trading room. It all starts in the trading room. Barry opens that up every morning, 30 minutes before the market opens. Uh, once again, this is free for all, okay? Not just subscribers. Even if you're not, come on in there. Uh, Check out the software while Barry trades in live real time and calls out his trades and navigates the market using our uh, powerful software here. All right. One other thing, too, uh, guys, I want to mention the one on one hour of power training that you get when you subscribe. This is a ninety nine dollar value. Uh, and it's very valuable and it's free when you subscribe you it's one on one with me Jamie or Steve um, and it's great because what you could do we offer really a lot of resources like our YouTube channel we send you a one hour starting from scratch video which is kind of like a mock session in itself uh, where you can uh, you can learn a lot of the stuff, you know, just on your own with our resources. And then when you come into that one-on-one -on -one training, uh, it can be more advanced. We can talk about more advanced strategies and even dabble into uh, in, in trading strategies and things like that. All right. Let's talk about our subscriber growth. And we don't do this just to brag or to show off. We want to show you what's been happening with trade ideas over the last year and a half. Okay. And this is not because the product sucks, okay? This is because we uh, just keep adding new features to our uh, array of filters and alerts and our AI Holly component. It's just, uh, it's just incredible the strides we're making in our development department. And it just gets better and better and more powerful each day. Uh, and more intuitive as, as well. So uh, the reason we show you this is not to pound our chest, but to show you that, hey, people are jumping on board and then jumping on board for a reason. And we have seen incredible growth over the last year and a half. 
Uh, one last thing, real quick on this. Uh, we've been still in this beta. Uh, it's our Brokerage Plus. If you are advanced and you write your own algos and strategies and you want to hook it up to auto trading with IB, you can do that now with our Brokerage Plus product. Okay, if you do want more information on that, you can see the link down here, trade-ideas.com slash download. Uh, and we took out the beta on this, I guess. Uh, so now it is trade-ideas.com download. So uh, I think it's still in beta phase, whereas as long as you are a premium member, you will not get charged uh, once we do uh, go formal with it. Uh, but uh, just to get more information, please uh, go to this, uh, this link here. All right. All right, let's go over our agenda for today. All right, we're gonna start out with a market recap like we always do. We're gonna talk about the Holly recap and observations. Ja Jamie's gonna uh, go over a couple of trades that were very uh, interesting today that uh, Holly uh, alerted us on. And we are gonna talk about the TOW, even though uh, Steve has stepped away for a well-deserved vacation. Uh, we're gonna talk about uh, the trade of the week, which is Siri, and uh, that'd be serious. XM Satellite, uh, uh, gonna do sector analysis for Mika. Mika was in here yesterday, uh, she's she's new to us, and I think it's always good to kind of update people on the sector analysis and and go over with uh, uh, what we use it and how we use it and how important it is to know the sectors. Uh, uh, yes, I see you there, Mika, thank you. <laughs> And then uh, a nice little surprise for you today. I'm going to show you uh, an alert that I've developed called Let's Go Fishing. And I'm just going to save that uh, for when the time comes. I'm not going to tease you with what it is exactly, but uh, it is a new alert and I will share it with everybody in here. I know everybody gets excited when they get new alerts. Uh, so we do have one on store for you today. But before we venture on into those topics, let's get first to the market recap. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time because we talked about it yesterday and it's pretty much the same same market that we have there you got a picture of apple and after hours after earnings so expect a decent gap up at least in the nasdaq heavy queues tomorrow let me see if i can grab this corner there we go so apple had earnings and after hours and it's trading up to basically all time highs there it's trading above that right now i believe yes it is but let's talk about where we are at the close today and we've been seeing uh, maybe maybe that's what the market was doing huh? holding out for apple's earnings all this time because really we talked about it yesterday we're pretty much just kind of resting and going sideways again we tried to sell off a couple of times usually early in the morning Seems like there's always some little bit of volume associated with it, and then the volume kind of peters out, and the buyers step in, and it creeps back higher. But here we find ourselves pretty much, if you looked at this bar right here, it's almost identical to this one, and we have gone nowhere in the last week, or actually probably seven, eight days, trading days. So, which can be... Uh, you know, observed as somewhat of a very bullish pattern because we did break up out of this high. I'll have to draw it again because I didn't save it. We broke up out of it and we kind of just going sideways. In other words, we're not coming back yet and testing this breakout. That's something I talked about yesterday that uh, uh, a lot of times a market will do much like what it did right here. Broke out of the range, came back, tested it kind of retested it there and went higher. Well, there's a good chance tomorrow, you know, with uh, with Apple earnings and uh, uh, just the frustration of the bears uh, that this market could kind of break out of this range tomorrow. We'll see. The queues, uh, especially. The queues have kind of pulled back. I talked about this yesterday after breaking out of this high, and now they kind of pulled back well, now they're sitting just below this breakout level, and it looks like the way the queues are trading, we could, we could, you know, potentially gap and move higher out of that. So, Jamie, I'm not going to spend the diamonds. Kind of put in a, uh, uh, just kind of a, a whatever that is. <laughs> I don't yeah, even know what to call that thing. <laughs> like, what is <laughs> the queues themselves are. Uh, what are we up here? 144.40 uh, in the aftermarket. The queues are. 
Is that what you said? Oh, yeah. 144.40. So, yeah, look, you know, close to this high. Yeah, it looks like they're, uh, the high from yesterday, which I thought maybe they'd even be a little higher. But obviously, there's a lot more influence on the queues than just Apple. But uh, but nonetheless, uh, looks like we may, you know, gap above this three-day high here. And then we'll have to see what happens. Yeah, and you never know what's going to happen overnight, you know. Mm -hmm. what's happening now, but tomorrow, the story could change to the up. Or, hey, you, you never know. Um, just because this is happening, we would assume yeah. it's going to gap up, but we, we don't really know for sure. No, no, we, we certainly don't. So that's about it. It's the same kind of same same dancing song here, just a, a market that just kind of just keeps grinding, melting up, whatever you want to call it. Uh, there hasn't been a whole lot of fear to that downside for a long time. As a matter of fact, I think I read the other day that we haven't had a 5% uh, uh, pullback in the spiders in one of the longest uh, phases. Uh, I can't remember the dates on it, but it's been a, it's been a long span. So... Uh, Jamie, if you're if you're ready, I, I unless you have something to add to the overall uh, uh, market uh, analysis there, I think we're probably ready to see what Holly has to say. Okay, just let me know if you can see my screen, Andy, and more importantly, I toyed around with my resolution to attempt to fit everything in, but if somebody, either you or somebody else, could tell me if they're seeing all of my screen. Uh, I believe we are. Yeah. Sure. The uh, compare count down, or not the compare count, but the single stock window down here, channel mm -hmm. bar up here. All right, good to go. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. So, as Andy said, I'm just going to kind of skirt over Holly's performance today. Um, and, of course, it kind of jives with what we saw on the open. So, let's just pull up the spy just to get a little reference point here. Um, so, we opened up first 20 minutes. We were right in this area, and then we started this little you know, kind of whipsaw action. Uh, as Steve so eloquently puts it, most of the time it's just shoots and ladders right, right through this whole little section here. But we definitely had a, a down, downward draft. I mean, the magnet was sucking everything down here. First bounce, take the elevator down. Then what do we do? Ladder back up, shoot back down and print new lows again before capitulating and then finding this little range here. So needless to say, this is a turbulent little area. Now, direction throughout the day on the risk off side, where she's just playing by her rules, stop losses, adhering to that, adhering to profit targets, and pardon me, guys, a little bit of noise pollution. And that was not a jet airplane, but I'm sure it sounded. <laughs> so in any case, <laughs> once we kind of flatten out here, a good portion of the day is gone. But we can see Holly's P&L. You know, if she's playing by the rules on risk off, taking her stops, profit targets, of course, there weren't any of those today, uh, and time holds, boom, 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 just getting chewed up all day. Once again, when we see Holly doing this, and of course, on the risk on side, if she's just buying and holding, long, down for most of the day, but not down a significant amount, but red nonetheless. Then late in the day, boom, the statistical traction starts to kick in those positions that she's holding start to do what we had hoped that they would do. And that, you know, we weren't in a real volatile period there. It was just, I think the bottoms had been put in and the statistical probability on those entries started to, 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 to play into the scene. Now we got up almost a little over, it was almost two and a half points at the peak here. But once again, if you didn't take the cookies, you got a pullback, another pop to highs, almost a pullback all the way to flat and then finishing 82 cents on a total of 15 trades today. However, we can only get a little bit of information from what we see here. But for this first half of the day, if the stat model is having a hard time in either risk mode, risk on, risk off, that tells us something. Today, Holly was kind of like the canary in the coal mine for most of the day. Hey, look, I keeled over. You might want to leave the mine or be very, very selective. Now, coincidentally, 
had some other metrics on the open that told me there was going to be a soft day kind of to the downside initially. But as we know, there are always plenty of good long trades, but depending on the type of day is going to dictate whether you try to hold those things for more alpha or take what you get in the short term moves, because there's a good chance it's going to come back down to that entry point. And that's what we saw a lot of that, a lot of that action today. So I'm just going to take a couple of examples of Holly, what we like to call trade around opportunities or going risk on. So let's take the risk on example first. And just before I get into this one, people typically, they, they might get confused if they're a new user. Well, what do I pick? Risk on, risk off. It's not something you pick as a setting for the whole day. It's better to approach it on a trade by trade basis. The C CRTO here is a perfect example. So didn't get into the trade until later in the day. I'm just going to expand these five minute candles to make it easier for everybody to see. And we can see Holly calls the buy right here. Now, she exited the trade on her profit save functionality, which is basically her trailing stop, which was really the prime directive of profit save was to prevent this system from letting a green trade turn into a red trade. So it's not the best at exits. The strong suit are the statistically weighted entries. So Holly gets out pretty early and only takes 15 cents. She was only in the trade approximately 10 minutes or actually, uh, yeah, 11.54, 12.05, we can see the highlighted area is where that ends. The dark shaded area is Holly getting out on risk off mode, executing your profit save for 15 cents. Now we can see here, this stock finished up 83 cents on the day. So if we see Holly getting out right here, there's really no reason from a human perspective. Okay, well, we're in the trade, it's just kind of going sideways for now. It's not coming anywhere close to our stop loss. So if you see her exiting a trade and you're in the trade as well, you can go, okay, I'm aware that she's doing that because she doesn't want to let her winner turn into a loser. Now I'm going to stick to my original stop loss. I'm going to see if we get any traction here. So just deciding to stay in the trade when Holly is exiting, that is you deciding to go risk on. I'm going to accept more risk. I'm going to try to make more. And then shortly after, we get a nice move to the upside here. So the goal is to try to get something in between the risk on spread and the risk off spread. Almost set, almost 70 cents in the middle there. So whether you ended up taking 20, 25, or even higher, great. That's the name of the game. So risk on is just staying in when Holly gets out. Now the next type of trade right here, the five is what I like to refer to as a trade around because Holly calls the buy right here. As soon as we get into it, it does not head north. It heads south. Now everybody keep in mind that this is the stop area right here. The trade did not get stopped out. Holly once again gets a little nervous, gets out about right here. She's like, this thing's not working. I might as well not let it stop out and take a smaller hit. That's what she does. She gets out early. Once again, she's not the best at exits. So if we see Holly in a negative trade, you should always pay attention to it and do the following. Go ahead. If this was the entry point with the blue line and you see it out of the money, train yourself to start going up back to back up to the entry signal, that line, right clicking, setting your price alert, set a price alert so that if it comes back up there, you'll be alerted on the second time. The point is this statistical probability is good for the day but sometimes the timing is a little bit off. Now, in this case, we never even got stopped out. So you would have been fine in this trade from the very beginning. Um, but when we see it come down and tickle just right above that stop area, and then we get to see this green bar here, some people might like that as an entry signal. Or once it gets back and pushes that second time, you would have been alerted. Then we just had a little sideways action and then a push to the upside. So that's taking advantage of one of Holly's trades that's it's not working yet. It's the equivalent of you sitting in an office and a guy leaning over to you and going, hey, this stock looks really good and I'm in it and it's a, it's against me a little bit, but didn't get stopped out. You can pick it up at a better price than, than I have. 
and you're like, oh, yeah, okay, thanks. It's good information. And then you profit from it. That's exactly what Holly's telling you each and every day on every trade. So keep that in mind. You know, do you have to jump in and take every trade? No. Probably not very prudent unless you're very familiar with the system. It's just like swimming. We don't just jump in headlong in the shallow end. Might get ourselves hurt. But once we feel comfortable, we can dive all over the pool. So just a couple of real simple but powerful examples of a risk on and a trade around. And of course, before I turn it back over to Andy, I just want to point out the fact, and I tweeted this earlier, which is a pretty good observation. I've added this column right here, which is max profit. So I'm going to resort. Now we're looking at all of Holly's 15 long entries, and keep in mind, 15 long entries at all different types of the day in a market that had a downside draft to it for most of the day before we started kind of flattening out here. So, all of these trades, with the exception of Dish, which Andy and I were looking at this trade when, uh, when, it, when it happened, I'm like, okay, well, it is a pullback alert, but, uh, you know, seeing that big green bar there, um, was interesting. I'll say that. Um, but in any case, this was the only one that, you know, was showing a zero value because what was the entry line here? 65.41 and the high of that candle, um, was 65.48, whatever, three cents, zero, relatively the same. But in this case, out of 15 entries, what this is telling us is what the position was up the most. So think about it from this perspective. As a human trader, what are the odds that on any given day, even on a day like today where there was a downdraft in the market, you're going to put on 15 trades and at one point be in the money on all of them, be in the position to push that sell button and take that money on 15 trades. And the worst one was, you know, maybe you were up two or three cents or you would have had to get out quick. Probably you're going to end up taking a loss if you took that dish trade because that thing was well, let's say it was volatile if you were trying to play it in this candle at the top. But think about that, you know. Is that an easy feat on any given market day? And the same thing occurred yesterday, Andy, if you remember. Um, on all the trades that she put on, they're all in the money at some point. Mm -hmm. So think about that. That's the power of the statistical model. And that's what we're trying to show everybody is, you know what? We're employing gaming theory um, into this market just like the casinos employ gaming theory and just like you know they make money all the time because they're playing the odds and they know long term if they get used to the to the statistical well in, in this case if a trader gets used to seeing the statistically weighted entries it really will change your perception because hey this little pattern right here i'm sure there there were a ton of them out there today but this one actually worked because there's statistical support behind it. And that's pretty much it. So Andy, right. if you're ready, I will push the baton. Nice. Uh, Frank says your compare account window saved him today. You know Thank what? You. I'm really? glad you said that, Frank, because I'm wondering when am I going to start hearing the people say, you know what? I watched this compare account window today and it really benefited me. So I'm glad. Good. Uh, yes. Good stuff. All right, let me share my screen now. Let me get this back to where it was. And what I'm going to do today, guys, I'm going to show you uh, sometimes how I kind of back my back myself into uh, building an alert. Okay, so in other words, I will see a chart uh, setting up, and then I say, "Wow, you know what? I bet I can build that as an alert." So. The example I had was Costco. And, you know, I, I was saying, uh, uh, I'm telling, telling a few people here the other day, Steve and uh, Jamie were one of them when this thing was getting beat up. It came down here, tested the 150 level. Uh, you know, this stock had been beaten up because, uh, of course, Amazon is going to take over the world and, and Costco is going to go. Uh, bankrupt and my, my theory is from a fun, fundamental standpoint is you know what 
this is overdone. This thing is <clears throat> pretty much sold off, what, 25, 27%, you know, based, you can see it here dropping from uh, the 183 level all the way down to 150 because uh, the, the Whole Foods, it, and it, it's obviously going to have an impact, but I'm thinking to myself, this is a good company, and this is overdone, And but you don't simply jump into a stock based on those conditions alone. You As, as a technical trader, I'm always letting for the technicals to set up, and not just what my gut feeling is or, you know, what my feeling is. But anyway, it did set up, uh, and it set up nicely, and it had a very nice move out of this kind of sideways bottoming pattern. So I said to myself, you know what? I'm going to back into this and build an alert to catch stocks like this. So what I did, oh gosh, now I'm going to have to share both of you with you because I bet I got a lot of you guys have, do not have the, uh, the range finder. So this is, a, this is something I built a long time ago. So I'm going to go to my cloud here. And I am going to pull up my range finder. Okay, there it is, my range finder 500, I call it, because this tracks the S&P 500. And you're going to see it basically all it is, it has all these stocks from the S&P 500, and it has them, the ranges. Okay, so what I want to do, I wanted to find Costco. So what I did is I configured course this is the other day so you're gonna to have to when I did it go to configure I go to the symbol list and I go to send single symbol okay I'm not pulling up a list I just want to see what Costco has to say in my range finder Jamie does this stuff all the time so now I have <clears throat> Costco in here so I can look at the position in the five-day range position in the 10-day range in the position in the 20-day range well Two days ago, when it was down here, obviously you didn't have these 10-day ranges and 20-day ranges would have been much lower. So what I did is I took these position in ranges, okay, and then I built me my Let's Go Fishing <laughs> uh, alert. And the reason I call it Let's Go Fishing, it's because it's somewhat a bottom fishing strategy. I don't have any... I don't have any problems. It's not my ideal setup is to find stocks, but I know if you hit these right, your risk reward could be tremendous. I mean, because you know your downside if you're playing something like this. Your your bottom was set down here at 150. All right, so you know your risk is only right there, and your reward could be, it's subjective. You Some people may want to go for 160. Some people may want to try to ride it all to 170. But you can see the amount of reward in a trade like this compared to the risk. Now, it is a risky trade, but it should your risk should be very, very limited. And that's what I like about it. Now, I don't want everybody to go out and start bottom fishing now because that's not what I'm saying to do, but I'm showing you a strategy that can work, that can give you a, uh, uh, a decent, a really good risk reward strategy. So what I did is I took those ranges and I created them based on what I found in Costco on my range finder. So. Let's go to, I built a regular new high alert. I want, I want to catch it if it's hitting new highs, but let's take a look at the window specific filters. And I've added some fundamentals in here because if a stock is on a death march and it has really, really bad fundamentals, I don't want to see it. In other words, if it's just losing money out the wazoo, it's uh, cash to debt ratio is just astronomical. You know, there, there's certain things I want to stay away with, and I'm going to show you. I built some fundamentals in here to kind of help me. So, in other words, if I see a stock close to a 52 week low and starting to develop a kind of a bottoming phase, and I see, hey, it's some pretty good fundamentals, and then that gets my eye. So, you're not going to see a whole lot of stocks coming in through here because of my fundamental filters I added to this. So, position in year range. I use my little range finder there it is a max of 35%. So in other words, I want to find stocks that are in the lower 35% of their 52 day, uh, 52 week range. Position in 20 day range. I also want it pulling back kind of, I want it on the lower half of that 20 day. 
Okay, I'm trying to find stuff like this right here. The 10 day is one I'm interested in. So position in 10 day range, a minimum of 98%. In other words, I want to be alerted to this if it's hitting a new high and about to go through its 10 day range high. Average daily volume, I'm looking for half a million shares a day. I want, if I'm gonna be swing trading stuff, I want it liquid. Okay, here's the kicker. I added some fundamental ratio. The price to earning ratio cannot be any more than 30. So in other words, a red flag is being thrown up if it's uh, PE ratio is too high. That doesn't mean it can't work. You know, if they have huge growth, uh, yes, I understand. Uh, ratio, all you gotta do is look at Amazon uh, for a prime example. But in this case, I'm looking for, you know, somewhat some value. But I don't wanna keep it too low, or otherwise I wouldn't get anything coming through there. Uh, earnings per share, at least when I'm making a dollar a share. Okay, I'm looking for kind of blue chip stuff that at least makes $1 a share. You're gonna see a lot of these things coming through here that are making five, $6 a share. But I don't want to see stocks that are losing money. And I also don't wanna see stocks that have a tremendously high cash to debt ratio. Okay, it's simply, all it is is simply cash. You can see right here, it's cash divided by debt, gives you a ratio. Uh, I had to be kind of liberal right here because so because so many companies with the low interest, very very low interest rate, are using debt to buy back shares. So they have issued a lot of debt lately. So that's why I can't use a positive number or like a anything over over one here or two, because uh, otherwise, I, once again, I would be catching very few stocks because a lot of people have bar borrowed money to buy down their equity or to give out more dividends, whatever the reason. That's the um, that's what we've seen due to the central bank involvement. All right, so there we have it. Now let's take a look at some of the stocks that came through here. And don't, don't, don't worry, I will share this with everybody. So we are going to go, I'm just gonna go to history and we're gonna put it on yesterday. This is when Costco came through. And you're gonna see a lot of the same patterns. It's very similar to the Trend Change Pro. Of course, there's gonna be a lot less stuff coming through this just because of the, uh, the fundamental filters that I put in there. But there you see Costco coming through yesterday, pretty much right when the market opened. You can see it right there. Let me go to a 15 minute time frame on my, this one, and there you go. Right at the get go, you know, Costco's coming through here. And let's see, there's another one that I have my eye on. Okay, raw stores. Raw stores came through, and this one may still have potential. It came through yesterday at 55.31. It's only really 30 cents higher right now, but you can see the pattern we're talking about. And look at raw stores. You know, it's trading close to 70, and now it's all the way back down to the 50, $55 range. All right. Taking a look over here, you got a you know nice earnings per share. You got a price earnings ratio. I've also added these in my columns as well, so I can get a quick glance of the price, the PE ratio. I can see the earnings state when they're coming out. Uh, I can see the cash, the debt. So oh, some nice little fundamental columns there to go along also with my volume. And you can see here, Ross Stores actually started picking up on the five-minute volume yesterday because it kind of cleared this level. So things to keep an eye on. I'm not saying go out and buy these, but keep an eye on them. This is one that I have my eye on. I thought it may do something today, but it really didn't. But, you know, I think above today's high, it might want to, you know, uh, try for this, uh, you know, $50 range up here. So let's do this. Let me just go ahead and just back test this. And I think you're going to see, well, let me first, let's take a look at what came through there today because there's some other stuff that came through here today that, that was also and raw stores and LB and actually that's the only two that came through here today. You're not going to get a lot of stuff on here, but I think what you're going to find out in this is there's some huge, some pretty good potential for some nice risk reward uh, uh, ratios here. So let me do this. Let me put it back on real time. Let me go ahead and just back test it and see what happens. And I am not. I'm just looking to see what kind of winning percentages. I'm not really concerned right now uh, about going in depth and, and 
uh, and optimizing it because I know there's not a whole lot of stuff that's going to come through here. So let's just do, do simulate by. And it better start getting better. Okay, getting a little bit better there. I, I never expect a strategy like this to kill it because you are kind of bottom fishing. Uh, and let's see, 1.58, 54%, 54 trades. Uh, 46. So nothing great. I think that I think what to carry. I mean, it is it is a winning, you know, 1.6. So it's it's not bad. Uh, 54 trades. You almost got 56% winners. So for a bottom strategy, this is not not that bad at all. What you what you really want to do here is manage your risk in something like this. So uh, I think it's very important to to look at the chart. You know, define your loss it should be very easy to find your risk because you're basically just using the low end of these ranges when you take something like this okay raw stores let's take a look at that you know very nice you know that that may be kind of a lot of risk there you know you're talking about a three dollar risk you know might you kind of had a level right here the key to do is manage your risk and let your profits when you do get that move let it work for you you know like this costco here you could be talking about a go pause go here so you get a big move another move right here you know that's basically what about a seven dollar move out of this range all the way to here and it looks like i'm probably going to go test this 161 45 level 55 level so Guys, what I'm going to do is, uh, Jamie, is there any questions out there that I need to hit on? I was kind of uh, going through this. I didn't really have time to look over there at the uh, in the questions. Any questions that I need to hit up on? Uh, I think we're pretty caught up. But if uh, okay. you know, once you drop that in there, is that that is the new high that's that's triggering in that window, correct? Correct. correct. So we had uh, we had a question from Frank. The you know we're getting the red line question a lot. What's that red line? Oh sure. yeah, right. So. Right. Well, let's see. Pull up Rost again. There it is. Right. And that is the next level of short-term resistance being generated because mm -hmm. new high is using that metric. Mm -hmm. So, Andy, if you want to give him a peek as to what, what's actually happening, if you right-click and hit configure, and then go into uh, the columns tab, mm -hmm. and just push the description over there. And now when we go back to the window, if you can show that description column, that okay. red line should coincide with that information in the description column. And that it does. Yep. That it does. So it's giving your next level of resistance is what it's doing, which can be used for a very nice, you know, profit target when you're in a trade. Or, you know, if you're not in a trade, a lot of these these lines right here could be it's telling you where the resistance is. If it gets above this, there's there's many traders that wouldn't even touch this until it got. You know, and I understand. Uh, uh, I definitely understand that concept. Sometimes I like to be a little early, but if it does get through this next level of resistance, then you could be talking about possibly going all the way up to here. Uh, it's always, guys, about reading you know, the charts, where your levels of support and resistance is. And you can see where this line is being drawn, that there's levels of resistance coming back all the way over here. So that is a pretty good level of resistance. If it gets above it, there's a very good chance it could venture on up to this 5830 level. But um, all right, so I, do, I want to make sure I get uh, Mika uh, the uh, sector analysis and any and any other uh, new trader that doesn't uh, that has not seen that and wants to start following the sectors. It's very important, I think, for every trader to learn to follow sectors. But before I do, I am going to drop this uh, into uh, into the window. Andy, there was, a, there was a user asking for the compare counts as well. So I wrapped off four of the compare counts. They're looking at different market caps uh, up into one link, and I dropped that in the chat area as well. So, Okay. 
and he's about to drop this one. There's another link in there for the compare account, so uh, it's in there if anybody needs it. I'll label this. Let's go fishing. Yeah, look at the compare account window, telling you if there's a bunch of fish to be had in the lake today, or mm -hmm. very few fish to be had, or there might be some barracuda swimming around in there, or some yeah, exactly. Yeah. So if you get bored from not catching any fish. The last thing you want to do is go swimming today because it might not turn out too well. That yeah, that is true. Okay, on to the uh, on to the sector analysis, and I want to remind everybody, it's very important, guys, to start to learn uh, you know your sector. These are the symbols. These are the ones that I use. It's the most popular eh, for the most part. They're going to be the most popular ones used for each sector. Uh, just real quick, this FXI, I know when I see that, China, that's China plays. China's been on a tear lately. This is a China 25 index, kind of like the Dow, and you can see here on the daily, uh, it does gap up a lot. I typically don't play this ETF, but it's a good way to keep keep an eye on how well the the, uh, the major uh, stocks in the, in the, in the China of, uh, exchanges are doing. So it's a, this is the top 25. And they're on a tear. And if you haven't noticed, K-Web as well didn't do all that great today. But it's had a nice move uh, as well, K-Web. This is your Baidu's, your Sina's, your Baba's, your Alibaba's. Uh, and what you'll do, guys, you'll want to learn uh, you want to learn the major stocks that belong to each sector. So when you see a K web coming through, you know to keep your eye on, uh, gosh, there's so many China plays, but uh, the big ones are Baidu, you know, Sina, Alibaba, of course, um, JD, uh, and there's a lot of obscure ones that you can catch. As a matter of fact, Jamie, uh, that that Caillou today, Caillou, this one, this play right here is at it's a China stock. It's a gaming stock out of China. Uh, yeah. And yep. And Holly had she did you know pretty well on it this morning. It kind of ran out of steam there. But kind of a lot of wicks in that chart. So it doesn't trade a whole lot of shares like the other ones do. But anyway, so what you want to do is have a list of sectors so you'll know which ones are strong by doing sorting them change from the close. So you'll know what kind of what to keep an eye out and not so much to run in and play them. But if you have your alerts up and running and and you see something come through, like I saw Caillou today and I knew uh, China stocks, China was a top one on the board. Or if you see it in one of your other alerts, like uh, uh, what else? Coal. Coal was strong today. We talked about, you know, Arch Coal yesterday doing well. I'm not sure what it did today, but uh, yep. Just by looking at that and seeing coal was strong, Arch had another, you know, decent day, pushing up, closing at a, uh, geez, probably a 52-week high. So it's good to know, it's good to know your sectors. And the way you do that, what you want to do is just go to Google, type the symbol in, like, I don't know why this thing keeps jumping down on me, K-O-L into Google, and then type top holdings. OK, uh, and you will find you'll get your your top holdings in there. Let's see here. Maybe K.O.L. and just type top holdings. And then you'll get a ray, you know. Uh, and it's, 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 it's just Google work. And then what you want to do is make a word doc or something like that and copy the symbols down in there. Uh, and if you're lucky, you'll find a good site that will have them all in there. So, uh, so there you go. This is uh, this would be the top holdings for the KOL index, top 25 holdings. So that's all you want to do. Just Google that for each sector and drop these in a word, you know, some in Excel spreadsheet, whatever you want to do, and have them handy. And then over time, what you'll do is you'll learn when the sector's strong, you'll go to your cheat sheet and you'll see, okay, these are the top holdings. And I'm not saying that you have to know them all, but know about, you know, five or six or seven of each sector. So you, when you see uh, like the SMH is uh, doing well, you can just real quick go to your Intel's, your uh, uh, NVIDIA's, you know, the, the top, top ones in that board. Uh, uh, it, and it's I'm not saying this is a strategy that you have to use to make money in the marketplace. I'm just saying it's a good thing to know. OK, as you become 
uh, an experienced trader, you want to know what what stocks are associated, uh, you know, with with this. So what I'm going to do here, this there is a symbol list that goes with this. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to take this symbol list and I'm going to drop it into the chat window. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my tools and I'm going to go to symbol list and I'm going to find my sector ETFs right there. So I'm going to hit edit list and I'm just going to copy and I'm going to paste all of these into the chat window. Let me Okay, so now they're there. So you can grab those. Well, you might want to wait till a minute before you grab them. I'm going to show you what you have to do. No, I tell you what, go ahead and grab those now. I'm going to show you what you need to do, and then I'll copy, and then I'll paste the uh, uh, the actual window into the chat room. So if you'll copy that, what we're going to do is here, we're going to go ahead and create you that symbol list. So what you want to do is go to Tools, go back to Symbol List, and you're just going to simply hit Create New List. All right, and maybe you just call these, like you said, Sector ETFs. Okay, just hit OK, and you just create a new list. Now, when you look over here in your symbol list um, uh, area, you're going to see it at the bottom, and it's going to say empty. So you're just going to highlight it, and you're going to click on Edit List. Okay, and then you're just going to paste those symbols into that list. And then just click OK. Now I got me a new sector ETFs with the 29 that I dropped in there. Now I'm going to delete this one so I don't get confused. The easy way to do that, just click delete list. So now I still have my sector ETFs. So Mika, did you get that? Great. Perfect. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the sector analysis, save and share, copy all, and I'm going to drop it in the window. All right, so I'm pasting that in there right now. All right, so what you want to do now is copy that, pull it up like this for those that haven't done it. All you have to do is copy that URL at the top. Okay, and now you want to go to File load from cloud the code will already be in there it copies it from the clipboard and then just hit so all you have to do is hit load you don't need to paste it in there so now you see i have a duplicate of it down here so what you're going to have to do now is right click configure go to your symbol list go add existing list find your sector etfs and just click on it and it's going to pop it over here on the left side like mine is okay and then all you have to do is check that when you check that you'll see the drop down menu above change from all symbols it'll change to only the following list so now you have your sector analysis watch list Did you get that, Mika? Okay, why is she, I'm waiting for her to respond. How, uh, Joe writes, how do you save multiple windows into one sharing link like you did with the compare count windows? Yeah, I was just, I was no, just okay. finishing the next question. So yeah, what you wanna do, and if you wouldn't mind just uh, going to your toolbar, hit file, uh, save to cloud real quick. So what you would do if you wanted to, you know, I paired those compare count windows down to where they were the only windows left open, right? 
And then I just said, well, I clicked the entire layout button that you see there, which checks off all the windows that you currently have open. And then I made sure that I did not check that box on the far left, which shows clear previous layout. So in other words, it's a layout file, but when you open it up, it just adds those four windows on top of your layout. That way you can easily position them where you want, save your default layout, you've added those windows easily. So that's just another you know, way to use the save layout file in the cloud. So basically it sounded like you basically kind of just saved another layout with your only your compare count windows in there? Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Yeah. And as far as opening more than, I don't think, is that our limit right now? You can't have more than 10 charts open, Andy? I think it is. I think so, yeah. Yeah. I think so. So, yeah, that's just a limitation, D. Um, we, might, yep. we might open it up uh, a little bit more for now, but I think 10 is the limit. All right, guys. Well, I think this was a... Uh, a a good webinar. You got you guys got some uh, some of you guys who are coming late. Got the sector analysis and uh, let's go fishing for those that uh, might want to try to find stocks that are good quality companies that, that potentially may be bouncing off a bottom. That's a uh, but mm -hmm. always remember just watch you know watch your risk on the downside because Andy, I like that. Oh, good, good. All right. Well, I think it's time to bring Scott in. Uh, uh, Gosh, real quickly, I, let me go over, Scott. Hold on. Let me go over the trade of the week. Okay, the trade of the week is Siri. And I'm going to be honest with you, Steve, was I, I, I help Steve a lot. We always get together on the weekend. We talk about these trade of the weeks. Uh, he was on vacation. I told him I'd get, get, take care of it. And I'd be darned if uh, my gut feeling didn't tell me to pay, take Costco because I really did like the risk reward there. But nonetheless, I uh, went with this Siri, and I still think it has a lot of potential. This one just may, it, it's a, it's, it's so thick and there's so many shares out there. This may one just may have to take some time. Okay. But what I do like about it is this thing has been mired in a bottoming pattern for like 10 years, you know, where it's been bouncing, but you know, bouncing around between, you know, three and $5. And it finally cleared that $5 range. Okay, it tried to do it over here, it didn't last very long, came back, but now it went it went sideways, formed a beautiful kind of pennant pattern or flag pattern, and, and then popped up out of there, a beautiful gap and go right there uh, over some really nice, what use was support now becomes, I'm sorry, what was resistance now becomes support right here at the 550 level. So that should be like a serious wall there if it does try to come back down. Nonetheless, you had a nice little volume, lots of option bought buying on this breakout. Tried to like shake the trees today. Right now, I think we're only down like six cents in this trade. So it's one that just you may have to be patient for those of you who took it and may have taken it uh, and uh, uh, because it is kind of, like I said, 11 year high and broke just broke out of it with a nice gap and go pattern. So uh, that is the trade of the week. Uh, stay tuned. We'll probably go over more next week. But with that said, uh, I will bring Scott in to walk us out of here and hang on because I think he's going to offer you guys a nice little, uh, nice little discount. Scotty, are you there? Yeah, thanks, Andy. Um, before we do, I just wanted to remind everyone that we have a podcast that has new episodes every Friday. So uh, subscribe to the podcast in your favorite podcast app. Just search for Trade Ideas Podcast in iTunes or Stitcher or uh, uh, Overcast, whichever um, podcast application you use, and you'll find it. Subscribe to it. Listen to the newest episodes. Stay tuned for the next one. Uh, last one was Jamie and Dan, and some of the previous episodes have guest speakers as well. Uh, the code today is future is now. Uh, that'll save you 15% off your first month or year of either premium or standard. I use all caps, just like you see it, and you can also download a handout. Go to the handouts panel on your GoToWebinar interface and click on the PDF download link there, and you'll have some of the slides from this presentation that includes the promotional code as well as contact information. 
Uh, if you have any questions, email info at trade-ideas.com. And do remember that code is useful for upgrading from standard to premium as well as uh, purchasing standard or premium. In both premium and standard, come with a full hour of one-on-one -on -one training with Andy or Steve or Jamie. Uh, follow uh, us on Twitter. Trade Ideas 1 is Dan Merkin today. Trader Steve Gomez. Jamie Hodge is QuantBot. Uh, Trade Ideas Pros are our handle on Facebook. Like our page so you get all the new content there. And again, info at trade-ideas.com is the best email to submit for help. Uh, thanks, everyone. Uh, the recording will be up later on. Uh, thank you, Andy. Thank you, Jamie. See you later. Thanks, Scott. Thanks, Jamie. Thanks, thanks everybody. We'll see you Thursday. All right, guys, have a good one. Bye-bye.